Mr. Zimura, we would now like to welcome you all to just guys fourth quarter of our 2020 earnings call. Uh, today we have with us the founder and the CEO of the company, Mr. VFS Money, and the CFO of the company, Mr. Abhishek Bansal. Uh, without further delay, I would now like to hand over the call to the management. Over to you guys. Hi everyone, welcome to just guys earnings call for fourth quarter of fiscal 20. Operating revenue for the quarter stood at 234.9 crores, which grew 1.2 percent year on year. Operating EBITDA stood at 74.4 crores for the quarter, witnessing 26.4 percent year on year growth. Adjusting for ease of expenses, operating EBITDA margin stood at a very healthy 34 percent for the quarter. At operating CBT level, margin stood at 25.2 percent. Now net profit for the quarter stood at about 76 crores, which was up 21.6 percent year on year. This was aided by 38 crores of other income for the quarter, which was robust due to mark-to-market gains on our investment portfolio due to declining bond yields. Coming to full year performance, operating revenue stood at 953 crores, growing approximately 7 percent year on year. EBITDA stood at 273 crores, growing 19.2 percent year on year. Adjusting for non-cash ease of expenses, EBITDA margin stood at 30.4 percent for the full year. FY20 full year net profit stood at 272 crores, witnessing a growth of 31.7 percent year on year. Coming to operational highlights, we had overall about 139 million unique users for the quarter, which was about flat year on year. Mobile traffic was almost 80 percent of overall traffic, while traffic in absolute numbers. Continues to be a pretty high number for us. Growth was majorly impacted due to two reasons. Firstly, uh, March month was significantly impacted due to COVID-19 shutdown, and secondly, we also spent lesser on advertising. For the quarter, we spent about 12 and a half crores on advertising, versus about 18 to 19 crores a quarter, which we were spending during the first half of the year. We added another about 780,000 listings to our database, and we now have about 29.4 million active listings, which was 14% year-on-year increase. Paid campaigns at the end of the quarter stood at about 536,000. Coming to the impact of COVID-19 on our business, as you all know, that things have started slowing down from mid-March, and thereafter lockdown happened from 25th of March. Our utmost priority, obviously, was safety of our employees, and thanks to timely efforts of our technology and other support team. Within a week's time, almost entire organization of approximately 12,000 employees was operational from home. From February end itself, we had started contingency planning to ensure that technologically we were fully equipped for any such scenario. As far as traffic impact is concerned, traffic was significantly impacted once lockdown started. For April month, our average daily traffic dropped about 49% from pre-COVID levels, say average of December to February. For the month of May, there has been some improvement, and lately traffic is at around 65 percent of pre-COVID levels. <clears throat> Coming to monetization, as we have mentioned earlier, SMEs were already facing pressures for last few quarters. Prior to lockdown, we had implemented our strategy of selling more on monthly payment plans to customers versus upfront payment plans. For the month of February, that strategy worked very well for us. We were able to grow our run rate of signing up customers. By almost 15 to 20 percent versus the previous quarter. However, with COVID-19 hitting all of a sudden, obviously that brought monetization uh, to somewhat a halt. We reworked on our pricing, decided to give better discounts to customers to retain them, decided to let customers opt for a late activation of their contract post the lockdown getting over to ensure that we could monetize to the best extent possible. For April, just to give a uh, brief idea a uh, new revenue was impacted almost 80% versus pre covid levels however since we also have payments coming from our past monthly payment customers we did see collections of about 35% uh, compared to pre covid levels even in the month of april at the same time we initiated measures to cut down on our discretionary costs such as advertising We renegotiated certain other expenses such as rentals, implemented measures to rationalize our employee costs. While some of these decisions obviously are challenging, 
uh, but necessary for business in such uncertain times. We are satisfied to report that for the month of April, as far as operating cash profitability is concerned, we were negative hardly by just three four crore rupees only. Obviously, if treasury income were to be considered, we would have been uh, positive. Coming to cash and equivalent, that's to get about 1,591 crores as on 31st March, growing about 19.6 percent year on year. The board has already approved the buyback of 220 crores on 30th April, and required approvals are in process. The buyback shall be via tender of the route and uh, at a price of about 700 rupees per share. And at this particular uh, price and quantum, almost 4.84 percent of companies' outstanding shares shall be bought back as part of the buyback. Now, on our cash and equivalent, approximately 65 percent of our treasury is parked in debt mutual funds. Another 21 percent into long maturity tax-free bonds. And rest about 14% into S&P six maturity plans. Overall, in terms of underlying exposure, 98% plus of treasury paper is AAA rated or equivalent. Within that, also approximately 75% is government securities or PSUs. We obviously keep evaluating specific exposures, and as of now, our treasury seems to be in a healthy shape. I thought this update should be useful in these uncertain or volatile times. Lastly, while COVID-19 impacted the business significantly, one good thing that we did was utilize our workforce to create enriched content for our B2B listing. If you visit our platform, you will see there is now a dedicated section where you can not only see B2B sellers, you get to see their products, detailed catalogs, prices, and other attributes. This content would obviously help us draw more traffic. And subsequently, help us monetize the strength of the platform better. We also intend to have a dedicated B2B portal, which should get launched shortly. It would be a separate website, separate app, focused on B2B vendors and products. With this update, we shall now open the floor for questions. Thank you. Sure, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, now I would like to request you if you wish to ask any question, please press zero and one on it till phone key pad. Repeating and requesting again, ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask any questions, please press zero and one on your telephone key pad. Thank you so much. With that, sir, sir the first question is coming up from Krishnan from Indian Advisory. The line has been unmuted. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I'm good evening to the discussion. I think I just want to uh, get a sense of one of the key reasons for the drop in the in the Q4 quarter. Sorry, could you please repeat key reason for dropping? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just reason for I just want to get a sense of you know, what what are the reasons. For the drop in the in Q4, have you done any analysis in terms of? I think the fall seems to be quite steep and magnified. Sorry, your voice is echoing. I would have to request you to please repeat and be bit louder. Okay. Now, uh, I just wanted to get an update on the key reasons for the drop in unit visitors in Q4. And have you done any analysis on why the numbers have dropped drastically? Okay, see, on the unique visitors uh, in uh, quarter four, there are uh, two or three reasons that uh, I mentioned in my opening remarks as well. Uh, firstly, on the advertising itself, if you see, we spent about twelve and a half crores for the quarter, uh, so that particular advertising was significantly uh, reduced, and uh, the advertising that we reduced uh, happened more on the digital side, where it directly impacts traffic. For last few quarters, we have been seeing that there were pressures on uh, monetization, etc. So we consciously decided to optimize our ad spend for those particular categories which yield better results for our particular customers. And another reason, obviously, is that for the month of March, uh, first of March itself was quite weak because uh, COVID-19 related uh, uh, impact had already started. And then from about third week onwards, traffic was significantly impacted. So these two three items were 
the ones that impacted traffic. As and when we see things returning back to normalcy, we should be stepping up our particular advertising spend, plus our particular optimization and uh, efforts on B two B side that should help us uh, growing traffic in coming quarters. Okay, thanks for that. And I think what also want to understand in you know, how much of your traffic is organic uh, through a direct search or just dial versus uh, you know paid or uh, in advertising or a search engine based. uh in a search so of the overall traffic approximately uh 20% of the traffic comes directly to us rest comes indirectly to us of the 80% indirect traffic approximately two thirds comes completely free of cost to us we don't pay anything for that and for the balance one third that is that comes part of our digital advertising spend Okay, so you're saying one third of eighty percent is uh, the paid search. Yes. Okay, and then what are the trends looking like? You also did give us some numbers of uh, how April and early part of May is looking like. Uh, can you give a little more details on how the traffic is looking like? You know, in this quarter for the first of the fiscal year. So, as I mentioned, that as soon as lockdown started, traffic took a hit uh, uh, drastically. So the immediate impact was about 55-60 percent uh, drop in traffic. Uh, for the overall month of April, it dropped about 49-50 uh, percent or so. In May, we are seeing some particular recovery. As we speak, say uh, for the last week or so, we are about uh, at about 65-68 percent of uh, pre-COVID level. So traffic as and when. Uh, geographies are opening up, restrictions are getting eased, uh, traffic is inching back up. Okay, thanks. One last question: uh, Any potential buyback dates uh, that you finalized? So, uh, day before yesterday, the postal ballot notice has been sent out uh, for shareholders' approval. At this point of time, we expect the record date to be anywhere in around uh, first or second week of July. And uh, post that, uh, maybe in about a month's time or so, based on how fast we can get all the required statutory approvals, by that should get concluded. Thank, thank you very much, and good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. The next question is coming up from Pranav Shatriya from Edelweiss. Your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. My first question is on uh, you know uh, uh, thank you for the color which you have given on uh, you know the COVID impact. Uh, but uh, can you tell us uh, you know how much is the uh, impact in terms of the collections uh, in the month of May? How much uh, you know you have recovered uh, from almost eighty uh, percent of the new business loss uh, which uh, you told? Now where does it stand in the month of May? Uh, and uh, my second question is uh, with regards to your uh, uh, cash flows. Uh, if I look at, uh, you know, uh, I mean, you know, because of index, uh, there is an adjustment. Uh, but uh, if I adjust 26 crore rent expenses, uh, the free cash flow for this year uh, comes at around 124 crore rupees. Is that number correct, or uh, uh, you know, some clarity there will be helpful? Thank you. Sure. So, firstly, I may have a question on uh, collections for the month of May. So, as I mentioned, that uh, for the month of April, uh, broadly we had about uh, 35% of pre-COVID levels. That was around 30, 31 crores or so. Uh, for the month of May, new business uh, or the new revenue that we generate is uh, uh, picking up. We do expect, uh, however, the pickup obviously is uh, gradual because. Uh, Uh, as of now, all our particular geographies or offices are operating at a limited capacity. We do expect uh, the collections to be somewhere around 34-35 crores for the month of May. And coming to your second question on sorry, I, I I didn't hear that number. How many per how much percent is it? I said for the month of May, collections could be broadly around 34-35 crores or so. Okay, okay, so broadly in the same level. So collections obviously have uh, two aspects to it. One, which comes from uh, new customers. Second, the what comes from existing monthly uh, payment customers who had uh, purchased our listings in the past. 
So a combination of two is what we are expecting to be in that particular range. Okay. Coming to your second question on uh, free operating cash flow. So yes, based on that particular rental adjustment, etc. Broadly, it was about one twenty to one twenty five crores for last year. Okay, and uh, the last week, would you want to give any color on you know uh, what sort of uh, growth uh, you know you would be looking for this uh, uh, year, or you know how do you see this year panning out? So, Pranav, uh, on growth front, obviously, situation is very fluid at this point of time. Uh, we would agree that most companies are first of all trying to ensure that. Uh, they survive or pass through this particular phase and subsequently focus on growth. So for the month of April, as I mentioned, that against 30, 31 crores of cash inflows, uh, our particular swift action ensured that uh, we were able to bring down our particular expenses from, say, 53 crores a month, cash expenses of 53 crores a month to just about 35 crores a month. Uh, for the month of May, most likely on a Cash at the level, we should be breaking even. So the idea is that uh, this particular first quarter, we want to ensure that we still stay operating cash flow positive, and uh, thereafter, how lockdown gets lifted, uh, that is what will determine uh, the rate of growth going forward. Having said that, the fact that we have created a lot of B2B content, etc., we are quite confident that once uh, lockdown improves. Uh, we should be able to monetize that particular piece quite better and we should be able to bounce back quite swiftly. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. The next question is coming up from Rashid Tarek from Namura. Mr. Tarek, please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thanks, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so just want to understand uh, uh, from a monthly payment plan perspective, we would have roughly what, 25, 30 percent of the overall plans under the monthly piece, right? Uh, if you could just help us understand from a 1Q perspective, what would be the follow-up in terms of pay listings in 1Q and then for the full year, how does it look like, uh, given that, you know, the SME business environment is likely to be challenged for the full year, right? So, uh, you are right that monthly payment plan, uh, Campaign form broadly 25-30% of our overall active state campaign. But just to give a perspective, for the month of February and the first half of March, this 25-30% had gone as high as uh, 70%. Wherein we realized that since we were uh, aggressively offering monthly payment plans to customers, uh, there was a decent uptick in number of customers that we were able to sign. Now, coming to how do we look at uh, active state campaigns for uh, fiscal 21? So, the feedback that we get from our particular sales team is that whenever they are reaching out to customers, it's not that the customers are saying that they don't want to uh, have their paid listing on the platform, but it's, the discussion is more like uh, not now or maybe once the lockdown gets eased. And that, I think, is a natural behavior for all of us. Like, our particular first reaction also was to cut down some uh, spends which we thought that, okay, we can live without these particular spends at this point of time. So my sense is that as soon as uh, lockdown gets over, there could be a bit of spent up demand also. So customers who did not renew their particular listings in the month of March and April, those particular customers should also come back. In fact, there is a possibility that uh, customers would realize that this particular spend should be essential for their particular business to get back customers. So we'll have to see how things go uh, going forward. Yeah, so, uh, so this, uh, the question was largely to understand from a one key perspective, right? I would assume the monthly part of the payment plan uh, contract would have had, had a higher risk, wherein, you know, customers would have called that saying that, you know, I would not want company service for the April and May, right? So that's on that 25 30 percent. How, how, what percentage of that would have dropped off? That's one. And second, from the other part of the business, let's say there's only 35 percent, which are more like six monthly to annual contracts. Of that, what customers would have come back to you saying that, you know, let's, let's try and defer the services for the time being and then we can focus it. Uh, we can get back to those services maybe post the lockdown or maybe a month or two down the line. 
Okay, so for the monthly payment customers, we did have customers who came to us and said that we don't want to pay for next one or two months or we don't want to pay for the lockdown period. So we gave them an option where they could skip one particular payment. And uh, we told them that once the lockdown gets over, we would again resume that particular billing. So that particular component was about, say, 8 to 10 percent of our uh, monthly payment uh, uh, customers. So, which would, in the overall scheme of things, would broadly be say uh, two to two and a half percent of our overall uh, campaign base. On the second component, where customers had already prepaid us, there there were certain customers who came back and said that okay, we want to pause our particular services for the lockdown period. Please resume those particular services at a later point of time. So a certain percentage of customers were in that particular bucket. And for the new business that we were able to generate for the month of April and May, there were certain uh, customers to whom we ourselves offered that, okay, you pay us now because we are running great discounts or great offers at this point of time, but you could activate your particular listing after the lockdown gets over. See, my business is a mandate business as far as sales or monetization is concerned. So it is very important for us to have as much productivity keep coming in on our daily basis. So the blended impact of all these three items, uh, we will have to see. Uh, last broad update that I had was compared to March and uh, our particular active sales campaigns were down about 15-16% as of say, uh, third week of uh, May or so. Uh, which, as I said, that captures all of these items. A part of it possibly could get offset once uh, some of those particular campaigns resume their particular services, etc. Okay, fair enough. No, that's 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 very helpful color. Uh, and uh, given, I think, uh, in the incremental what we've been selling this water, uh, has there been any uh, impact in terms of realization? How are we in terms? Uh, selling versus what we were in terms of the other realization numbers? So definitely in such an environment, one thing that happens is that uh, your uh, big ticket customers, they are the ones to defer their particular uh, purchase or renewal decision. However, in many of those cases, the decision could be deferral rather than a decision of not resuming any time in future. For others who actually sign up, the ticket size could be lower. So for the month of April and May, whatever um, new revenue that we were able to pick up, yes, the ticket size was lower. Uh, so, But I think that over the long run, once uh, collection starts coming back to pre-COVID levels, uh, realizations by and large should be similar to what we had so far. Okay, thank you. Uh, and just lastly, uh, on on the uh, cost structure side, uh, so we, we had a fair greatest amount of cost in terms of the overall cost structure, right? Uh, if you could just help us understand what portion of that will be sustainable and what portion of that will sort of come back in the coming quarters. Thank you. So on the cost structure, if you see that uh, about uh, 55, 60% uh, comes from uh, primarily the employee expenses. So uh, broadly, if you were to take Q4 uh, operating expense structure, so on a monthly basis, Q4 had about 58 and half crores of operating expenses. If you remove five and half crore of use of expenses, we are left with uh, 53 crores. Within 53 crores, we had about 31, 32 crores of employee expenses. Then uh, another about uh, uh, seven eight crores of incentives, which are in any case variable. Large portion of it is variable, directly linked to revenues. Then the biggest uh, expense items typically are advertising, followed by rental, etc. So as I mentioned earlier, that uh, we were able to uh, cut down our particular spends for the month of April and May. Uh, to about 35 crores. Having said that, once things start looking uh, brighter, some of these expenses obviously would come back. For example, advertising. We would want to spend on advertising to promote our B2B platform, etc. Uh, similarly, incentive expenses, etc. would uh, start coming in. 
so my sense is that uh, those particular expenses which would resume would in any case have a linkage to how top line is faring perfect thank you thank you thank you so much the next question is coming up from keshav garg line from counter clinical investment line has been muted please go ahead sir i wanted to understand the logic of uh, of the buyback price being uh, decided at 700 rupees when the cmp was around 300 rupees so so ultimately shareholders will have to pay a higher capital gain tax and also the number of shares that can be bought back is less than 5% now if this buyback price would have been 400 rupees then shareholders would have got the same uh, amount of money which is 220 crore returned to them and uh, and the number of shares bought back would have been over 7% of outstanding shares and the taxation on the shareholders the capital gains would also have been lesser sir so if you can uh, do something about it then please do it or in uh, uh yeah uh, or, or next time please uh, uh keep the buyback price more reasonable okay kesha just to clarify this time when the government introduced buyback tax at uh, companies level uh, my understanding is there is no particular capital gains tax that needs to be paid at shareholders level which was not the case earlier so irrespective of whatever is the price there will not there will not be any particular taxes at shareholders level second as far as uh, price is concerned uh, our particular tender offer buyback is mainly a medium to return cash back to shareholders in a way it's a quasi dividend so it doesn't really matter whether the price is 700 600 800 the key thought process behind that particular price was that we looked at whatever was the average price of last one year what was the maximum price and uh, average of those two is what the board decided to go ahead with so the thought process is that we want all shareholders to participate and post by that we ideally want the shareholder shareholding pattern to by and large to remain the same okay sir uh, sir in any case had the price been lower the number of shares uh, uh, bought back and extinguished would have been higher so the eps would have increased more that was my limited uh, point and uh, sir uh, so otherwise i wanted to understand so that uh, sir after 2015 uh, we had around 3 4 years of fall uh, in in our operating profit and since the past 2 years again the company is making like all time high ebitda so so what exactly happened during this 3 year period so post 2015 or taking a step back closer to our particular ipo the next two years we were operating at about 25 30% top line growth with about uh, 25 to 30% ebitda margin next uh, three four years we were making certain uh, uh, investments due to which our particular operating profitability to cut in last two to two and half years we have done lot of optimization in terms of uh firstly there is a lot of automation that has come in due to which non sales employees they have been reduced from a peak of 4400 non sales employees to about 3000 3100 at this point of time similarly on several other expenses as well relating to it technology infra etc there again we did the optimization by signing up long term deals etc so all those initiatives uh ensured uh, that our particular operating margins have been improving and as you would have seen the recent quarter was one of the highest in uh, last 6 7 years or so sure sir and so also so recently one of our competitors india mart got listed and so their performance is dramatically better than our so, so since we are in the same space so what exactly are they being able to do that we are not able to do and how do we hope to address that gap see while i cannot obviously comment on uh, specific uh, competitor but uh, as we would know that uh, for us 80% of the revenue comes from b2c oriented categories and these are the categories which have seen massive disruption over the last 5 to 6 years 
we had done our detailed analysis in last about six years. There is almost about uh, $40 billion plus of capital inflows that have come in. Uh, having said that, in these times, like uh, some uh, unprecedented events such as COVID-19, that obviously will end up uh, exposing uh, uh, weakness in some of these particular business models. So it is great that uh, some of our competitors are uh, opening up the market, which also opens up uh, more avenues for us. So far, we have focused on uh, running the business efficiently, and I think we should be able to get our particular top-line growth, traffic growth, again, back to the levels that we had witnessed a few years back. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. The next question is coming up from Alankar Garude from Macquarie. The line has been unmuted, so please go ahead. Uh, hi, good evening, everyone. Um, Abhishek, you mentioned that uh, cash expenses have come down to about uh, 35 crores per month in, in the months of April and May uh, from 53 odd crores. Uh, uh, now, uh, and you also mentioned that some of this, uh, some of these costs could come back once uh, things start looking, start looking a bit brighter. Uh, so, just wanted to understand uh, this particular comment of yours, and, and you mentioned about advertising possibly uh, looking to come back. But if I also look at some of the other costs, like employee costs, for example, wherein we have seen the absolute number of employees coming down on a sequential basis. Uh, so can you also throw some color on, on the employee side? Uh, uh, could we see some further rationalization happening? Uh, uh, any comments on that uh, would be really helpful. Okay. So on the cost side, see, uh, for the month of April, May, we had drastically cut down on our advertising spend. So we curtailed our advertising spend by almost uh, by 90% or so. But once things start looking better, I would want to uh, bring back that particular advertising so that we can reach out to as many Indian users as possible. So that is one particular expense item which would come back. But as I said that we always would keep an eye on how our particular monetization is coming out. Secondly, on uh, incentives as well. So whatever incentives that we pay to our employees which are directly linked to revenues. So as and when revenues scale up, those particular incentives also uh, could come back. Having said that, there will be certain uh, set of expenses which would permanently be down. For example, we have taken a decision that in certain departments, uh, automation is obviously the way to go. So there will be a strong trust on automation to try to reduce that particular uh, uh, requirement of uh, uh, workforce in certain departments. Then uh, for the if that particular requirement is reduced, that obviously reduces my requirement for equivalent uh, office space. And with office space going down, uh, related expenses such as uh, power, fuel, whatever, those particular expenses go down. By and large, the thing would be that uh, technology-related things, those would be stepped up to ensure that company remains technologically robust. And uh, other particular spend would be optimized as much as possible. Coming to your second question on employee count. So employee count, this particular quarter, we uh, intentionally held back on our particular hiring. So that is primarily one of the reasons that there is that particular sequential fall of about 400, 500 employees. Having said that, there is a significant skew that we have in our particular uh, sales productivity. So we are looking at ways by which uh, we could sort of have similar monetization by having, say, 10-15% uh, lesser workforce. So there are uh, works in pipeline on those particular uh, items. The idea is, since the environment is very challenging, we have to be prepared for any uh, worst case scenario and even in such particular situations, we don't want the company to be at even operating cash flow level. But at the same time, we would not uh, do anything silly to ensure that uh, that compromises either product development or uh, long-term growth potential. Understood. Uh, uh, Abhishek, uh, uh, the second question which I wanted to ask uh, you as well as many is uh, how exactly are our uh, 
sales and marketing teams interacting with uh, the business owners now uh, uh, what is what is the medium of interaction uh, um, has the quality as well as the quantity of interactions been significantly impacted the business owners basically even want to uh, 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 kind of connect with uh, our field force at this point of time to answer this that yes the uh, quantity of uh, interaction has gone down which is uh, reflecting in uh, say april run rate of uh, new business generation being about 80% down having said that even earlier so out of our particular 9000 or sales force about uh, 4000 are uh, tele sales executives those tele sales executives in any case even earlier used to interact with customers via Uh, electronic means such as by either by calling them or staying in touch via messaging etc. Uh, for other feet on street as well, with their existing customers, they already had uh, running relationship. So we were able to smoothly transition all of them to uh, start getting in touch with customers solely via either calling or sending them messages. So in this particular uh, digital era where customers are used to online payments etc., I. think that uh, is reaching out to customers yes there was a challenge but to some extent uh, uh, with the use of technology we could uh, overcome that the key challenge obviously was that since everyone is realizing that we don't know how the situation is going to be everyone wants to be in a conversation mode which is where the feedback came from our particular sales executives that the customer is saying uh, not now let us speak once the lockdown is over so temporarily yes there is a hit once things start opening up uh, a platform such as that us should uh, immensely benefit because we do know that our particular customers hardly have any other alternatives on which should they could spend and the amount that they pay to textile our sense is that that particular amount is not that high a uh, uh, money that they have to shell out yes they would want to optimize their particular spend but uh, with some visibility of their business resuming back to normal they should be resuming all such things right and one final question from my side uh, uh, do, do you see that uh, uh, given that uh, uh, with, with the situation we have currently the startup ecosystem is likely to face uh, increased pressure uh, both on their operations as well as uh, on on the ability to get funding easily at least for the next few months uh do you believe that there could be some opportunities which could come up uh, on the mna side uh, which we might want to explore so on the startup side uh, all of us are hearing the uh, day to day news flow of uh, drastic step in terms of reduction of workforce so my sense is that the well funded startup they would want to conserve whatever funds they have in their kitty so that once this particular period is over then that is when they would resume those particular investments uh but again this kind of um event clearly would demonstrate that um a business model which works on solely gathering users by giving discounts cashbacks those particular business models uh will face uh, issues going forward and as far as any m&a opportunities etc concern so in case there is anything which has synergies with a business such as ours or which we believe could be a immensely profitable business in future but today is in a very initial stage yes we could be open to looking at it uh, but at this point of time uh, internally itself we have so many things on our plate that we are focusing on that itself and that would uh, thanks abhishek uh, uh, all the best Thank you. Thank you so much, and Mr. Bansal. Since we don't have any further questions at this point of time, turning the program back to you for a closing comment, sir. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. While these are uncertain times, our focus continues to ensure that the business is run as efficiently as possible, uh, getting traffic and monetization back to pre-COVID levels, and then scaling it up thereafter. Our monthly payment plan strategy pre-COVID gives us confidence that the same should yield great results as and when economy starts opening up. In case you have any further queries, please do reach out, and uh, we will do our best to address. That's it from our side. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much, Mr. Bunsel. Thank you, respected panelists, members. Thank you, participants, for joining the call. Wish you all have a great evening ahead and requesting to please stay safe. Thank you once again.